Okay, in this video I want to have a look at the concept of a region on a input screen where you might click a mouse. Okay, so imagine that's my screen and I have a line going across the middle and I know that that distance is 100, that distance across is 100 and this is say 50. Okay, what I'm interested in is I'm going to click my mouse on this screen. If I click my mouse here in this top half, um, for example, I want it to draw a certain type of colour at that point. If I click down here, I want it to draw a different type of colour. How does it work? What's the logic of it? And how does Python um, allow you to do it? And how should you think about this? Okay, mathematically, we are always dealing with this coordinate system. X is horizontal and Y is vertical, and this is the this corner up here is the zero zero position. So, let's first of all mark a few regions. We're going to just try a horizontal line to start with. So imagine I have a horizontal line, and this horizontal line measures from the from the top of the screen fifty coming down to it. Now what's interesting is that when I click on a point over here, up here or down here, when you click with Python and you use the Windows get mouse function, so let's just say that when you click you have a piece of code, right so I'm going to click here, right for example. In my code I have something which says window win dot get there's no capital G, so bear with me a second, it should be a lower case. Uh, lower G, get mouse. Okay, now the really clever thing is, is that I can use this bit of code and the information from clicking get mouse, and which is stored in this, this variable here, P, which will tell me where I clicked. Okay, so let's just spell it out. Where have I clicked? Let's say that that's P. Well, we change the colour. What we're going to say is that this distance here I can get from P dot get. I'm capitalising the G again. I don't mean to capitalise it. Uh, it's a lower. It's P dot get Y. And that will give me, that will give me the distance from the top of the screen down to here. Now, if I wanted to know, say I had quadrants, I had regions, right, little squares, and I will come to those later. At the moment, the only bit I'm really interested in, if I've just got a single horizontal line, the only bit I'm interested in is how far down have I clicked. So this thing I've got in dark green is the only piece of information I need to check, right? So this get y, and what I really need to do is I need to compare that value against this value here, 50. Okay, so let's continue with the scenario. And this, in this scenario, we are only interested in first of all a horizontal. We will do another example where we're interested in it uh, being a vertical line, and then we'll look at squares in a moment. So, in my code, I write p equals win dot get mouse using the graphics library. And this passes me all the information about the point I've clicked. Now, on from the other screen, we're going to say that horizontal line was um, its, its y value for the horizontal line is 50. Okay, from the top of the screen, um, if I can just draw it in this corner over here, from the top of the screen down to where this horizontal line I've placed is 50. So, what I now want to do is from this create an if statement to check whether I've clicked the point above this line or below. So the, the piece of information I want to really compare is this number 50 with the y, the distance of the y. So imagine over here, okay, I've got, imagine a tiny screen over here and let's use a different colour. I've clicked my mouse here, right? 
and I'm interested in that distance there, that y distance. So let's, let's make our code simple. Let's create a variable called y and let's pass it p dot get y. Now what that will do is the distance from the top of the screen to the point I'm at, it'll store it in y. Now this distance of the line, which I've used as a capital Y, I'm hoping that doesn't complicate the situation. Let's um, um, emphasize the fact that this is the line we're interested in down here, right? I want to know now, is that Y greater than this Y? Because if it is, that means that the distance where I click the point is much further down than the position of this horizontal line. So let's write what that code might look like. Let's use a different color. If I say if, and if I say y, that's this y that I've got from my point, is greater than 50, and I, and I, here, here is where I'm going to put my code to execute, so let's just put some dots in here, right, for where you're going to write your, draw your circle, brown, uh, blue, or whatever color, using the information from the original point you've clicked, right? But look at the logic. This if statement says, if the point I've clicked, the distance coming down, y, is greater than the y value, which I'm just guessing um, from my fixed example is 50, then I've actually clicked down here, below the line. So if I've clicked below the line, what do I want to do? I want to go ahead and draw a um, say black circle right now the alternative is remember that's a colon there at the end of that and that's indented across okay so all the code to draw that black circle goes there so that's reasonably straightforward so what we'll do is one more example but we'll do it in the vertical so to go back to a very simple scenario, okay, uh, there is my x, y, my screen, with its x value going that way, y coming down, and in this screen I have a vertical line coming down, and this distance here for the vertical line is 50. So now I'm interested in, let's use a different colour, I'm interested in clicking on this screen. If it clicks anywhere on this right hand side, I want to draw one type of circle. If it clicks over here, I want to draw a different circle and I want to know where I click. So just as we did before, let's see how much we can put in. Let's say that I click here, right? So I click here, there's my point. The, in, the length I'm interested in is that length there, the p dot get x distance, right? So look how my code might work. So in my code, I would have a p storing the windows dot get mouse. Then I can pass the x value of p, store it by getting out of this point, get x, and I'll store it in this variable here, x. Then I need to compare whether that is bigger or smaller than this value here. So I do an if x is greater than 50, do something, da 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 da, else if x is less than, or shall we say equal to 50, do something else. And that essentially is the way that this logic works. Very finally, we will look at the most complicated scenario where you combine so imagine I have my coordinate system, but in there I have a rectangle. And the rectangle is 50 from the edge, 50 down. I know I've drawn it slightly inaccurately to so hold with me, right? And um, these, these lengths are 100 and 100, okay? So I have this rectangle green shape on my screen and I want to know if I click inside it, I want to fill it. If I click outside it, I don't want to do anything. Okay, so 
what does the code look like? Well, well, look again at the measurements. First of all, I need to find, let's take a hypothetical point. Let's suggest I click here. Okay, I need to know that distance in comparison to that distance. And I need to know that distance in comparison to that distance. But it's not just that, because if you just consider those two values, what you end up doing is only dealing actually with this open region. Let's see if I can draw it out, okay? If that's all I'm going to look at, I'm actually considering this whole open region where I've marked it in white, if I can just fill it. But actually, I've got an upper limit. I can't just use that area. I've got to draw an upper limit to how far across I'm interested and a downward limit of just how far down I'm interested. Okay, so how would you actually end up coding it? Here, your if statement has to combine two statements. Let's say I click my mouse here. I have to check if it's greater than this distance and if it's less than this distance, because if it's if it if you keep on going across, you actually leave the rectangle, but you are still greater than this. Okay, so that's only in the x direction, but actually, because we're interested in a region, we also have to check coming down. And if we're coming down, we have to check we're greater than this distance here and less than this distance here. So actually, it's quite complicated. You have to make sure you get the upper and the lower bounds of the rectangle, as well as um, the, um, yeah, no, that's essentially it, the upper and lower bounds, so you make sure you hit this period in this area inside. So imagine I click my mouse and I get the click position, right? So I've got my get mouse. This bit's easy. I'll, to make my code easier, I'll pass the x distance that I've clicked on my mouse to there, and I'll pass my y distance um, to there. Okay, so I don't have to keep on writing. I'm capitalizing the G, so I shouldn't, have, shouldn't be doing that. Okay, so the crucial element here is that the x and y here represent the x, y coordinates of this point. So, for my x coordinate, I need to check it against two values, this one and this one. So how would the code look like? Well, it's got to be, I've got to check if it's greater than this one. So if we consider this edge of the rectangle as uh, x1 and this as x2. Now here's a hint. Try as much as you can when you write code to simplify your logic by passing these values into simple variables with clear names. And if you do that, um, you'll find the coding a lot simpler. Now, what would make my code really, really simple is if I take this edge of the rectangle, remember I've got a rectangle here, that's what I'm interested to know if I've clicked inside it, and that's the point I'm looking at. What would make this really, really useful is that distance there of that edge, if I store it in a single variable, call it x1, and if I store this distance in x2, and I do the same thing downward. So imagine, I'm, I'm interested to know how far down I've gone. So this distance to the top of it, if I call it y1, and the distance all the way down to the bottom, I call it y2. So if you use variables to help you, you can do this with your code. So from my mouse click, let's use a different colour. From my mouse click, let's quickly just sketch it out, win.getMouse, I get my x position, which is, which is p.getx, and I get my y, p.gety. If I define x1, say as 50, which is, as I said before, the edge of the screen coming across to this edge of the rectangle. So there's the rectangle. If I just sketch it out here. There's my rectangle. Have I hit, have I clicked inside it? This is the edge of the, of the actual screen. So x1 represents this distance. Okay, 
whatever I need, I, I'll put it into a variable. x2 represents this distance, which if it's a width of 100, and that x1 is 50, then x2 is simply going to be 150. Okay? Same logic applies coming downwards. So that distance is y1, and let's say y1 is 50. Okay? I'm going to do them next to each other just to keep them all on the screen, but you would obviously write these lines of code, and y2 would be something like 150. So this is what my if statement would look like. I would say if x, which is where I've clicked, and this I'm interested in these distances, right? X If x is greater than x1, but less than x2, right? Because that distance was x2. So it would be if, let's use a different color, uh, use yellow, right? So if x is greater than x1, right? And x is less than x2, I know that if that condition is true, I have clicked somewhere between that and that distance. I now need to narrow it down to make sure I've clicked that. So then I have to have some more AND statements. And so my next AND statement would be AND. Give me a second. We're going to use a slightly different colour, just so you can see them all combined. So, I haven't finished. And if y, which is the value of the point, so remember I'm clicking down here, that's that's distance there, right? y is greater than y1, and y is less than y2, I know that if all those four conditions are true, I have clicked inside this and then I can pop some code in under there to do something like a set fill on that rectangle, draw on that rectangle. So that gives you an idea of the complexity of um, using points within Python.